And the next race on the card, the men's Coxed Four Grand Final. Between, as you see, Yugoslavia, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Germany and Italy. This another men's event which will be dropped from the uh, Olympic program. But nevertheless, we have six very high quality, fast crews contesting this final. The lights go green and the crews away very cleanly. New Zealand and Australia, as befits the two crews that took the direct path to the final, have drawn the centre lanes, but in fact on the near side it's Germany and Italy who begin to nose into an early lead as the crews now try and settle and find their race pace. This new start system working very well indeed. Only had one false start that we've witnessed uh, in marked contrast to last year's fiasco when so many false starts were being awarded. And it's very much hoped that the start system will be refined even further by the time the uh, Olympic regatta takes place in just under a year's time. Gritty determination from the Kiwis as they power off from the blocks. Yes, I notice uh, that uh, there's Chris White there at three in the New Zealand boat, who was a world champion way back in 1982 and 1983. Um, I had the misfortune to run up against him in those races, and he managed to come out on top. Very, very, very gritty competitor. So the crew's well away now into this first quarter of the men's Cox Fours, trying to settle, find their race rhythm again. And uh, very little to show, as you would expect, between it between the crews. A strong looking US4 digging in, coming up through to the 500 meter marker. We should get an early indication of where people are lying. And certainly as they cross the line there, all six crews are pretty much in a bunch, but I think it was the US and Germany uh, occupying the gold and silver medal positions. Italy still on, uh, still on the lane here, the closest to us in lane six, making it a very determined push to stay with them. The thing is, in these boats, as they get larger, up through the fours, up to the eights, you try very hard not to let people break contact from you. It's very difficult to draw back. These are big boats, and although it's only a length, it's still 40-odd feet. It's a long way to make back at this sort of pace. Good shot there of the Australians and the Americans. The Australians, for some years now, have adopted not only a squad system, as they have at the Institute of Sport, but they have a, a, much, a much more unified coaching system, which makes it, of course, much easier to meld crews together when you actually bring the athletes uh, into one training centre. The same applies to the New Zealanders, who have their centre in Auckland. Uh, but the US, of course, still have this problem of uh, getting people from a very diverse geographic spread and getting them together uh, traditionally has proved very difficult. But we've seen today so far, a couple of the US crews do extremely well, and certainly in terms of their squad preparation, you have to say that the US would appear to have got it right for these championships. And this American Cox Four going out into the lead in much the same way as we saw their women's four go out in the last race. They lead by about two-thirds of a length over the rest of the field right now. The other crews bunched up behind them for the uh, minor placings, but now it looks like uh, New Zealand who are taking on the challenge ahead of Germany. New Zealand about a half a canvas up on Germany. Still the Italians in fourth place. Fifth, it looks like the Australians and the Yugoslavs slipping off the race pace at the halfway stage as they go through the 1,000 metre mark. Yes, quite often we see, uh, we see crews use the 1,000 metre mark as a point at which to push, and what you saw there were the New Zealanders take the opportunity to push and raise their game just before that. The idea there being that if they can make it work and they can steal a bit of a march on the opposition, then they're in a position to respond when the opposition starts to push themselves. But you've got a very good shot there of not only the Americans, but the size of their task. As you can see, the bow of the New Zealand boat pushing back at them. Typically New Zealand, very competitive. They're not going to give anything away. They're very strong athletes, both physically and mentally. Chris White there at three, looking very relaxed. Just glances across at the Germans. You often see this. Uh, the athletes just take a little glance. It's not just to find out where the crew crews are, but they can also sense whether their opposition's going well or not. The sort of sixth sense you tend to develop after years of racing at this level, and Chris White has certainly done a lot of that. But at the moment, it's the US Cox Four in this uh, final of the men's Cox Fours, holding that three quarters of a length lead as they push again to try to gain that extra few feet to give them a length lead. But the Italian, Italians now 
challenging very hard against the Germans for the bronze medal position. But at the moment, it maintains at the US in gold, New Zealand in silver, as they come through to the 1500 metre marker. The 500 to go, the last quarter of this race, the men's Cox Fours. Well, so far on the programme, we've seen uh, crews that want to win going out in front and staying out in front. We haven't yet seen uh, too much uh, of the sort of tactical racing that's possible on a six-lane course, where crews just hang back slightly and then come through in their own manner, which can be so incredibly destructive. But these Americans emulating uh, their ladies' heavyweight four, going out in front, staying there, and so far staving off any challenge from the others. And in particular, the New Zealanders, whose bow you can see there, just half a length back. But the New Zealanders giving it a go through the last 500 metres. Bow ball beginning to creep up relative to the American boat. Now, it just remains to be seen. Can they sustain that push? Well, as they come through to the last 250 metres now, they're making a really very determined push. They've come back to within two feet of the gold medal, and you can bet the Cox is shouting at them, this is what you've trained for. Come on, the gold's on, the gold's on, we can get this. Cox will be counting them down. But you can see in that New Zealand crew, the head's starting to roll. The Americans responding, kicking hard. Very little in it now, but I think... The Americans are gaining the impetus and pushing on as they count down to the line, perhaps 100 metres to go. It'll feel like a very long way, and the Germans coming back on the Italians, challenging for that bronze medal position. The Kiwis now in all sorts of trouble hanging on. It's the result of a very determined effort, but the Americans certainly have came, gained that half a length, carry them through to the gold. Can the Italians hang on to the bronze? The Germans come at them very strongly. Gold, US silver New Zealand and just bronze for the Italians so the second gold medal in a row for the Americans first in the ladies at four minus and now in the men's heavyweight four and in fact later in the schedule they were to pick up two more goals in ladies lightweight rowing first in the ladies pair that was Christine Smith and Ellen Minsner and then later on in the ladies lightweight coxless four so a substantial chunk of the gold on offer today going to America. 6.37, the winning time there for the US for the gold medal. New Zealand, some one second behind. And Italy, another second and a half behind them for the bronze.